the bookworms. This is the start of a new reading vlog. This is actually probably going to be my New York Comic Con vlog as well because that's happening next weekend and chances are I'm not gonna have a ton that I'm gonna be vlogging about this week. But right now I'm currently reading One of Us is Lying by Karen M. McManus. I am also reading Nightblood by Ellie Blake and today is filming day. I am just filming all of the things. I have so many videos that I need to get done because we have the busiest month ever in October and I need to like stock up and edit my little heart out so that I can put all of these videos out and stuff. And yeah, I just have so much that I'm excited about reading and you guys will see that in my October TBR video, which I just filmed. I'm in love with my, my TBR for this month. Like I'm so excited about it. I can't even explain it. But yeah, I'm gonna go get back to filming. Also doing lots of outfit photos today. Got fun things coming on Instagram. It's just a good time. So I just finished filming like a million videos and Andrew is a rock star because I also took 29 outfit photos today so I am docked up for all of October because I really wanted to post an outfit and a book recommendation every single day in October. I'm losing my voice <laughs> because I did a lot of filming and I'm really hot and we just got a giant pizza and I am so excited to shove it in my face because I am starving and I just feel like I deserve it after this long long day. <laughs> Hello! It is officially Thursday October fourth which means that today is the first day of New York Comic Con and I just finished getting ready Andrew and I are about to head over to the Javits Center I have a couple of things that I made a list of that I want to do my first priority being heading over to the Jordan Denae booth because she's coming out with three shirts for Victoria Schwab's A Darker Shade of Magic series and I need all of them <laughs> I'm really really excited I was not expecting her to do that and I really hope that she's gonna start doing some more book shirts there's a bunch of other things on our agenda that's like just my top one but I'll be bringing you guys along so that you can see everything at the convention and all the things that we get up to today. We made it to New York Comic Con! Yes! made it! We've seen two Spider-Mans, we saw a really cool Squirrel Girl, and we did not have to wait on the line, which yeah. is the beauty of going a little bit later. Mm -hmm. And we missed all of the lines. We did, it was We great. can't see anything, we can't sign anything, we might as well go home. Yeah. Alright, that was New York Comic Con. Alright, bye guys. <laughs> We are now waiting in line for my friend Amy's panel, but so far today I got a bullet journal from Ariel Joviardi. I already have one of these, but I'm almost out of pages and I needed another one, so I'm glad she had them. I also got a Little Witch Academia print, and I got this very cool sampler of the Dungeons and Dragons book that's coming out soon. Well, hello everyone! Thank you so much for coming! Comic-Con Star Wars Women of the Galaxy panel and uh, we're here to celebrate Chronicle's new book Star Wars Women of the Galaxy and it's about time, right? <laughs> I am Ashley Eckstein. I have a little something to do with female you know, characters in Star Wars. <laughs> Yeah. 
So day one of New York Comic Con is officially over. I'm exhausted and very sweaty, <laughs> if you can tell. But I figured that I would do a quick haul right now of what I got for the day because I didn't get too much. So I don't think that I'm gonna film a separate haul. So this will be a good, good time to show you. So I already showed you a couple things that I got earlier today. The most exciting thing that I wanted like more than anything is this book, which is Women of the Galaxy, which is 75 female characters within the Star Wars universe that my friend Amy wrote and she had a panel for it today with a bunch of the artists and it was just like super amazing. So I'm really, really excited to have this. It doesn't go on sale until October 30th, but they had it early for people who attended the panel. So I obviously bought a copy and got it signed by like everyone, which is really exciting, but I'm just like so happy because this is honestly just what I wanted most. I also got this Stranger Things print from Babs Tar. And then on the other side of it, I got this really cool Harry Potter print that I saw earlier, but stopped by Artist Alley at the end of the day to just grab. I don't actually know who the artist is on this one, but oh, it's upside down. Goes this way. But I love it. I think it's really pretty. I also got this little Harry Potter postcard set. There's one for every single book and you will see the rest of them on Instagram. I have this very cool and very shiny wild card bookmark. I also have The Brilliant Death by Amy Rose Capetta. This one actually comes out this month, so I should read that soon. <laughs> but this is a young adult fantasy novel, so obviously excited for it. And lastly, I got this book from Quirk Books, which sounds really fun. It's called Race Me in a Lobster. So it's absurd internet ads and the real conversations that followed them. So it's nonfiction and it's all like very short stories and it just sounds like it's gonna be hilarious. We just went out to dinner with our friend Jill. We just got home. We ended up walking home from the restaurant. So that's why like we're both just really sweaty. But I think that we're just gonna watch the new episode of Modern Family and then maybe more Critical Role, but probably I'll fall asleep before then and just call it a night uh, because we have another long day ahead of us tomorrow. We're seeing Patrick Rothfuss, which I'm so excited about. Actually, when we were on the show floor today, we were walking by the Penguin Teen booth and then Patrick Rothfuss was just standing there like in Penguin and I was like, and I actually got like a little clip of him so you might see that earlier on in the vlog when I was just like awkwardly like oh you're right there <laughs> Good night. Good morning. It is now New York Comic Con day two. I'm already forgetting what day it is because I'm still tired. I'm debating whether I should carry all of these books with me to get them signed by Victoria Schwab because these are the only four that I have left to get signed by her. My A Darker Shade of Magic collector's editions, the Barnes & Noble one and the 
like regular collector's edition. Those ones are signed, but they're not personalized. So I'm like, should I bring one of those? Should I bring these? I don't know what to do. Do I want to carry them? I don't know, I'm trying to figure it out now. But we're probably gonna be heading out soon. There is an ARC drop that I wanna go to at 11, but I don't know if we're gonna make it, to be honest. And Victoria Schwab's doing a couple of signings today, and we're seeing Patrick Rothfuss, which I'm really excited about, and yeah. We just got here for day two, and we are on the escalator, and <laughs> beelining to Harper, because I'm trying to get a circle of shadows on just made it in time. It's really dark up this escalator. Very dark. sophomore year of college when he got a copy of Tolkien's The Lord of the Rings as a Christmas gift. Good choice! He promptly changed his major from computer science to journalism. Good choice! And his first published novel, The Crystal Shard, came out from the publisher TSR in 1988 and introduced the enormously popular dark elf, sorry if I screw this up, I've only read it, not said it, Drist Doerden, did I say that right? Okay. <laughs> A canonical answer there. Since then, his books have sold more than 10 million copies. Here we also have Ooh. Pat, Pat Rothfuss was born in Madison, Wisconsin, to awesome parents who encouraged him to read and, cre and create through reading to him gentle boosts of self-esteem and depriva deprivation of ca cable television. I feel you on that, though somehow, in my case, I'm not a best-selling fantasy author. I don't know how these things work. Uh, he spent years working on what was originally known as just the book, but which you all now know is the New York Times bestseller, The Name of the Wind. He also runs the World Builders Charity, which helps raise money to pull people out of poverty all over the world. What we're doing is, uh, Sunday through Thursday, that first week, is going to be a new episode every night. You'll also be able to access all episodes uh, on all platforms uh, within two weeks. So uh, then Sunday, December 9th, there will be episodes 6 through 10 running also Sunday through Thursday. There'll be weekend marathons. They'll be streaming on sci-fi.com, all that. So by mid-December, you will be able to devour the whole season. And uh, I really hope you enjoy it. So without wasting any more time, let's watch the first episode of Night Flyers. And then we'll be back with that. Some of the cast here. Not just everyone brings sweets to the stage, so hi. <laughs> uh, well, it just so happens that our next guest is the doctor's wife. You know her. Learning lines 
for Doctor Who is a sort of full-time occupation. Uh, I'm sure you'll remember. We talked about this. You told me that. Yeah. It was a Sunday. You no, know, you said learn your lines on Sunday for the week, because otherwise, yeah. and I did. I took your You've advice. Got to go to There's so yeah, much. You only rolled in at sort of like. Or, Ten or, Sunday morning yeah. after partying. I know, all and then I'd lie all day, sleep all night, and turn up on Monday and be bright as a lark. Yeah. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> what is it specifically though that makes him so typical? Because well, because he talks he slash she um, talks all the time. He just he has big chunks of dialogue, and you tend to have to rattle it off, and it's not always conversational. <laughs> not always sort of understandable. Well, <laughs> it makes perfect sense, Alex. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> but you know, it's 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 stuff that you have to right. you have to figure out what you think you're saying, and then you have to learn it, and then you have to learn it again because you have to be able to talk it really quickly and be at the front of your brain the whole time. And it's a lot. Mm -hmm. Uh, I mean, it's fantastic, and it's very exciting to have all that stuff to play with, but it does mean there's a lot of homework. Hello. So, Hi. my camera is already gonna die. That's cool. It's the third day of New York Comic Con, but we're actually not going to New York Comic Con. We're going to the New York Anime Con, which is in a separate location, and it should be interesting. We've heard <laughs> some things about it. Doesn't sound like we'll be there very long, but I'm actually kind of excited. So, last camera battery died. As I was saying, I'm pretty excited to have like a calm and relaxing day at home, kind of, because it was just like a lot the past two days. But we're gonna do the anime convention and then we're also going to go to Marshall's and I'm gonna see if I can get some like more fall home decor. And I have to say, I'm actually like more excited for fall decoration shopping than I am for the anime con. And I might make pumpkin bread, but I just wanna like be home because we've had. I think like the past like three weekends or more, probably more, knowing my schedule, we just have not like been home and I just wanna wanna be home. And I also really wanna read uh, Muse of Nightmares, which I didn't get to start on the day that I said that I was starting it because I've just been busy with Comic-Con and tired and there's been no time for anything. But, oh, last night, so the Doctor Who panel was like super awesome. It was really cool to see Matt Smith and David Tennant and Alex Kingston like all in the same room. They have such great banter with one another, so it was really, really enjoyable. We also saw the Night Flyers panel, which was fun. We also saw Patrick Rothfuss and Ari Salvatore, which is like amazing. We like walked around the floor a little bit. Honestly, it was just so crowded. I just wanted to like get away. <laughs> That's our plans for the day. I'll show you some clips from the anime floor once we get there, possibly from Marshalls. <laughs> then we'll wrap this vlog up. Okay. For the past week, I've been the worst <laughs> vlogger in the world. You just saw a clip of Shuffleboard, which we went to for my brother's birthday and his girlfriend Amanda's birthday. They did like a joint thing last night in Brooklyn at the Shuffleboard place that had like major 60s vibes going on. It was really cute and it was really fun. The last time that I talked to you, I was like, we're going to the anime con. I'll show you what it's like at anime con. It was a joke. <laughs> It was like horrible. We walked the entire floor of that anime convention in like 20 minutes and there was like literally nothing there. There was even one exhibitor that had a sign on their booth that said like, sorry, exhibiting at New York Comic Con. So if you have the chance, just go to New York Comic Con. Don't bother going to the anime con because it was terrible. It was clearly an afterthought. They like did not do anything to make it a place where people would want to be. <laughs> it was really bad. Even like the major manga publishers and Crunchyroll and like, you know, anime companies, all of them had their booths at New York Comic Con. So it was really just like silly and sad. We ended up having a quiet day on Sunday. I ended up getting really sick, but we've been playing a lot of Super Mario Party, so that has been occupying my time. Monday night I went out to dinner with friends, which was really fun, but I didn't bring my camera and I was still like slightly under the weather. Fast forward, yes, last night was shuffleboard night, and tonight I'm going to my friend Lauren's for her apartment warming party. I'm really excited because I've never seen her place before, and we've been best friends 
since she was born. Oh, we played Dungeons and Dragons today, which was great with Mackie and Alexa, and I meant to take a vlog clip of that, but I totally forgot. But it was fun, and then tomorrow, we're going to the Lainey Taylor signing at Books of Wonder. That's pretty much everything that's going on. Oh, you know what? Here's a reading update. So last time I talked to you, I was gonna start Muse of Nightmares, and I have since finished Muse of Nightmares, and I'm also halfway through Small Spaces by Catherine Arden, which I'm really enjoying. It's like a spooky middle grade, it's super cute. And I am also a quarter of the way through The Last Magician by Lisa Maxwell, which I'm also very much enjoying. Reading updates, woo! And this is my outfit. Oh, pumpkin -y. My nose is all red. It's so cold. I know, me too. I'm at Books of Wonder with DJ and Alexa. Hello. And we're getting all of our Lainey Taylor books signed uh, for the Muse of Nightmares event, which we're very excited about. We just picked up caffeine from Starbucks, so we're all set. And I have a giant bag of books with me <laughs> that I have to carry home by myself, <laughs> so that should be fun. I'm so thrilled to be sitting here with Lainey Taylor, one of my favorite authors of all time. I don't think I mentioned this, but when I got to YA, it was 2011. I didn't know that. One of the very first books I read was Daughter Smoke and Bone, and like my mind exploded, and suddenly I wanted to write adult fiction, and honest to God, like, your book's only books, so maybe. I want to write in this category. Let us about me. Okay, so Music of Nightmares is a phenomenally beautiful book. Um, I want to spoil everything, but I won't, because you guys have such a treat in store for you. Okay, so you said that Sarai, who is your blue-skinned goddess girl, Music of Nightmares, um, you said that she has lived in your head for 20 years. Uh, can you talk about what you what you knew about her first? I don't know exactly how long it's been. I just know that I, at some point in the distant past, uh, I had an idea for a character. I think that I dreamt her, um, but I'm not sure because it was so long ago. And now that I'm the age that I am, actually, it's probably more like 25, 28 years or something. Like 20 years isn't doesn't continue to be as long ago as you know what I mean. Um, and so I don't know where she came from, but she was this young woman who lived in a lived high above the human city, and I don't know exactly, I don't remember what I thought she lived in then, but just that she sent nightmares to people who lived in the city, and I didn't know why, and um, I didn't really know anything else. I think there was vaguely something in the story that I tried to write that had to do with child abductions or something like that, um, but I never got it together because back then um, I didn't actually get anything together that I tried to write, and I ne like never finished anything. <laughs> never, I did not have the resources yet to do that, but I had lots of ideas. She, I think that the reason maybe she stayed in my mind so much is because I just I love the phrase "muse of nightmares" and I love the juxtaposition of ideas there, and I think that that's really what made it stick. 